You know that feeling? You are searching on the internet and suddenly you are like, whoa, what is that? And that's how you discovered Acero Corsa Competizione. And here we are, guys, in this video. My name is Jardier and I'm gonna be your guide how to start with Assetto Corsa Competizione in 2022. Now, what is Assetto Corsa Competizione? Assetto Corsa Competizione, or ACC, is the official GT World Challenge video game. Well, I would like to say it's a simulation, but actually on a Steam page it's called a video game. But, well, let's go with that. The final release of the Acero Corsa Competizione was 2019 in May. The game features the Blank Paint GD series from 2018-2019 with all the cars and liveries and also now with the GT World Challenge 2020 and 2021. Not with all the racetracks but with most of the cars as well. It also features the GT4 Championship with uh, most of the cars and also the tracks and liveries and also as a special cars that were used in a spa 24 hour race in the past we have a lamborghini super trofeo from 2018 and we have a porsche cup as well well if that already hook you up with the game let's see what do you do when you install the game now i highly recommend using this game with the wheel and a proper settings or you can also use the gamepad because we saw in the past a lot of fast people with the gamepad and maybe 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 you can drive the keyboard and such but i wouldn't recommend it i really really recommend you use the at least at least the wheel like whatever wheel but at least the wheel now obviously the game is also on a consoles but the main game base i would personally say is on our computers uh, the game really focused on, on for online gaming and it gives a lot of amazing stuff Not only have a lot of amazing communities where you can race on but also you can do endurance races and driver swap races with your friends But let's get to that later. Let's go forward to how to even get into the game itself now The game menu is very simple. You have the championships that are already implemented in the game 2018 2019 20 2021 20, uh, IGT GD4 and open series that are very very nice in a single player where you can basically make your own multi-class racing you have your career and Yeah, and and that's basically it then you go to multiplayer Which is probably the most important or special events where can be some competitions and time trials in terms of setting up the game with the graphics and as such, it obviously depends on your computer. I would say the, the game is very CPU usage difficult. So make sure to have a good CPU because that's probably the biggest problem if you go to online racing or if you have a single player with many cars on a racetrack. Now recently Acero Corsa got a new update for NVIDIA to get uh, used with the DLSS or if you have any other car you can use FSR which helps with the performance a little bit. It's not super 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 good but it can help as well. Obviously the game supports VR as well but as said the game is very very hard on the computers so the VR users might have uh, slight issues but one of the best drivers in this game is actually using VR so yeah you get your point from that. About the force feedback in this game, I'm using a Fanatec DD1 wheel with a Club Sport 2.5 and uh, as you can see in the settings on the screen, I'm using 80% gain in the game, zero minimal force, damper is a very important thing in the new update, uh, you might use 0, 15, 40, depends on the car, it gives a bit of a different strength of the force feedback in like a neutral zone at the wheel, dynamic damping in the 100, and steering lock, I would say, is very important, guys. Every single car in this game has a different steering lock. If you... I'm using 480 for McLaren, as you can see right now. 480 on a wheel and 480 on a, in the game. And uh, if you don't know exactly what steering uh, lock to use on each car, if you set it to 800 and on your wheel to 800, the game will basically set it itself. Very simple and very nice. Uh, about the force week on my DD1, I have a gain on 80%. On my wheel itself, I have a 40. So I have a kind of like a strong force feedback, but not too strong. Each car is different and also each setup of the car is different. So on some tracks, I'm using a little bit less. On, on some tracks, I'm using a little bit more. When you set up your basic controls for your wheel overall, there is important to have several hour buttons uh, marked. Ignition, starter if you're doing your pit stops, pit limiter if there is no automatic pit stop, and then one of the most important buttons. You have to adjust your traction control and or ABS or brake bias during the races. It's very, very important if you're wearing the tires or if the car 
or the track is getting more slippery or the tires are dying and you need to get more grip so you can adjust your traction control very very important to put those buttons up and probably one of the most important buttons of them all cycle hud mfd it's very, very simple. When you're driving in this game, you can change your pit stop preset. You can change your settings of the car as well. You can circle through the all the options and such. And it's very, very important, especially if you do any type of online racing or endurance racing or anything like that. This button is super important together with the D-pad option so you can go up and down and change the settings. Now in ACC you can also create your own custom liveries in a game. It's very simplified, some cars are very limited, but you can put some nice cars, some nice uh, changes, name your team as you want it, and so on so on. You can also create their, your own custom custom liveries, but it sadly doesn't work same as in iRacing, uh, that you can just go on a trading page and download it. You have to literally give delivery to other people, and it sometimes makes a little problem sort of service, so it's... For me personally, not very popular to use, but you can create some beautiful liveries as well. In the game, obviously, you have some online statistics of how you drive. You have your car control, your safety rating, how safe you are around the other cars and such. And all these nonsense, which was amazing implementation in a game at the beginning. But after two years, nobody give a damn anymore because it basically means nothing. <laughs> Maybe it'd be nice to do something about it in the future. Like, uh, obviously, the CP rating matters when you're going for the CP server. But otherwise, I think the rest is basically only if you want to brag in, in front of your friends that you're super super safe driver and your control car control is amazing but if you go for the wet race your car control will go down nevertheless so it doesn't even matter in the end now if you want to suffer you can literally go into multiplayer and you can right away start with your racing you can join some lobbies and such and just go on with the racing i personally wouldn't recommend that at all there are way better options now, there is a lot of communities you can race on in Acero Corsa Competizione because the communities are what actually creates the game. This game doesn't have sophisticated multiplayer as, for example, iRacing, where you have everything on one page, but it still works very nicely and simple. Although, it would be nice to implement in the game like recommended communities or something like that, so you just, just don't join like a random race. But yeah, let's talk about those communities. Now, this is just my opinion, guys. There's probably way, way more. I would say every country has their own communities, but I'm going to be talking about more international, and it's my list that I am using on my channel or why I'm racing as my favorite. Now, I would say my most favorite right now is probably the simgrid.com. It's like one of the most professional communities. It's created by David Perel, the racing driver. They also have the Coach Dave Academy set up. So basically, if you are lost in a game, you can also like go into that already. They are creating championships, endurance racing. They help with the SRO eSport and stuff like that. Or you can go somewhere else. Uh, my second very, very favorite is the RCI Race Club International. It's a, a bit smaller community and I would say it's more about like a fun and league racing. Both all, all the communities about league racing and this is like the easiest way to find them. I would like to say that RCI is my favorite in this because it's like a nice simple community, nice owners, nice people and they are nice. You, they can be nicely personal, you know, so so you're not <laughs> you know, you're not getting bullied too much, you know. Uh and uh, does a lot of awesome racing. I don't know if I forgot to say about the SimGrid. SimGrid also has the thing called daily racing, where they basically have prepared servers where you can uh, race basically non-stop. You can sign up for the race and just race there, which is a very nice implementation. Now on RCI, you have a league racing, special events. Uh, we did several endurances there, and it was always very, very nice. Uh, next big league place or usually was Apex Online Racing. I haven't been racing there for a while, but I think the community is still huge. If you are a fan of Project Cars, Formula 1 games, iRacing, whatever, even ACC, they have everything implemented, so it's a nice, nice place to go. Now, very, very popular for everyone is Low Fuel Motorsport, which is a, basically a website trying to go together with ACC and like a iRacing type of signing for the races. Very simply, it's very same same to SimGrid as well. You basically just, you create your account, uh, you, you do your license and then you join the lobbies. Like every hour, for example, there's some race or every day there's a different races and you join that and then you race. 
I think that's way better to do this than actually go to official multiplayer and just go to random lobbies. Because in these, people get a rating. It's very similar to our racing. It's, they are getting ratings and everything. And it's so much better for some racing. The feedback was really, really nice recently. I haven't done a single race there yet because I created my account. The website was having some issues. So I was like, okay, I had some other league races. So I skipped for now, but I will definitely give it a go myself as well. And as said, there's many, many communities out there. Uh, probably your country have own community so you can basically go wherever you want what is the best for you i think if you just google a little bit you find the best community i think same as other games like air factor and such this is what creates the game the communities maybe the developers could focus on that a little bit more Talking about the communities, you can also create your own one. For example, uh, on a sim racing GP website, the website uh, partner with Jimmy Broben, for example, we are having our own championships there as well as my Jardier community. It's a super nice website where you can uh, host your own races, create your own events, championships, and it's very, very simple because you don't have to create or rent or make those servers yourself because otherwise in uh, Acero Corsa Commissione, if you want to do your own online server, you have to buy somewhere something. You know, you have to go to Amazon or somewhere, buy uh, uh, like a server host or somewhere else. Uh, so it can get complicated. The settings of the server is very, very uh, difficult. And I personally, because I'm a lazy person sometimes, I really like the Simracing GP because I create a championship for winter for my community within five minutes with the weather and everything. And it's super simplified, super easy. So, yeah. If you don't want to join any community or anything like that, you can go to the multiplayer itself and there is a there is a competitive server which is basically literally like implementing thing from the game similar to what I was talking about SimGrid Daily or Low Fuel Motorsport. There's probably even more guys. I'm just talking about the stuff I know, so I don't want to give you anything I don't know. And you basically join the race, uh it it gives you rating uh, and then you get into the better and better lobby. I saw a lot of cheaters in this in the past. Uh, I, I I never actually in my life tried a CP race. So as you can see about my rating, so I, I cannot recommend it entirely. But I saw, for example, my friend George Budby racing there. He never had any issues. So uh, it's probably all about you guys. In Asero Corsa Competizione, you have uh, many options of the cars. Uh, each car is different. It has a different balance of the performance, of course, from every different year as well. And... The BOP changes occasionally, so the cars are different. What was OP two years ago is no longer OP now. So, uh, at the recording of this video, the top three, four cars in this game right now, BMW M4 GD3, McLaren 720S, Astor Martin V8, it's probably like a top three really good cars you can pick from the game. If you want really safe option for a car, Aston Martin V8 for the Rockies is very nice uh, option, safe and nice car to do. McLaren is a bit more difficult and BMW is somewhere in the middle. It's basically the most popular car right now because the car is just so fast, but we'll see what's going to happen in the future. When you choose your car, obviously, you have to go to the setup. There's several options. You can have a safe preset, aggressive preset, and from that you can create your own setup. As I was talking about a setup, there's uh, probably uh, options where you can buy setups, get the no setups, get free setups and uh, get help from the people or you can buy setups from Coach Dave Academy and so on. I will leave it to you because I don't want to recommend anything that I have nothing to do with. Except my community. We are the best community ever. Now, including the setups, I would say the setup itself, let's not talk about that because that's probably for another video. The most important thing, uh, you have dry tires, wet tires, dry tires. After, let's say, three laps of driving, your optimal pressure should be around 27.6 on all four tires. If you have 28.5 or 26, you're going to be losing a lot of a hell of a pace. So be careful on that. If you're using, if, the, if it's raining and the track is wet, uh, your wet tires should be around 30.0 approximately. It's like an optimal, optimal for all four. If you have too much or too low, uh, assign the pressures accordingly for that. 
totally important thing I completely forgot. This game has a most amazing weather system. I, sp I think it's like completely unique to any other game. I would say Air Factor 2 is very close, but this game is super random in a weather. The, the admin of the server, or the creator of the server can change several like randomness and default settings. Obviously it can be dry, 100% sure. It can be wet, 100% sure. It can be flooded or just a little rain, or the weather can be completely random. That can make the racing absolutely crazy, especially the endurance racing when you're driving for 12 hours and the weather changes randomly three times if it rains for 30 minutes and it's stop raining and, and it's raining even more and, and so on. It's, it's unique. That's what this game is all about, guys. All about, guys. Amazing GD3, GD4 racing, multi-class, endurance racing with your friends and it's massively unique in the weather system right now and I think it doesn't have a competition in this particular thing. I said, Air Factor 2, uh, I would say it's pretty close, but it's still this is like perfectly... Uh, I don't think anybody has it so random like here. Now you go to your car, you go to your community, you go to your pressures, you're doing some online racing. There's a several things you have to be careful about as well when you're driving. Uh, on a start procedure, do not jump the start. It's very careful to follow exactly what the game is telling you. It's not like in, uh, for example, iRacing, but it's very forgiving what you're doing, but it's still strict. In this game, you have to literally follow what the game is telling you. Like, to follow that green line and stay there, do not go faster, do not speed as well. Same goes to the pit entry. Now the game is very strict. If you go to the pits and there's like 50 km uh, speed limit, be on 50 km when you're entering the pits. Now in the pits, you have to go into the square red circle. It's uh, very sensitive. It, it's not the favorite thing in this game to go in a pit because sometimes you just go millimeter uh, to the left or to the right and they move your car you lose three seconds you get pissed at that and it's still in the game but uh, probably the best option i can give you what i'm using for the past several months is whenever you're going in a pit go into the bonnet camera and you just stop in front of that flip-flop and you're gonna be fine most of the time most of the time now, if you hate yourself in a multi-class racing, I really recommend you try GD4 as well. GD4 is, to me, the best thing in ACC, even though it's probably the least popular, because everybody likes GD3, right? And getting molested by GD3 cars for, I don't know, six hours in some endurance race is really a, a pain in the ass, being a GD4 car, which is 10 seconds slower. But I can you tell you what, guys, GD4 racing is one of the best things in this game. It's so much slower than GD3, it's more like a touring car racing, and it can give you some amazing fights. Now, you might be probably interested about the future of Assetto Corsa Competition. Now it's January when I'm recording this video, and we already have confirmed, basically, from a video, uh, that there's gonna be some American update, apparently, because they showed pictures of the Circuit of the America, the Cota. We saw slight glimpses of the Ferrari Challenge, Lamborghini Super Tofeo, the new one, uh, BMW 2 CS, which will give some really close racing, I assume, as well, and Porsche Cup. Uh, according to that, like, obviously everyone thinks there's gonna be GTW Challenge America update, so let's hope there's gonna be more tracks than uh, Kota, like Watkins Glen, uh, Sebring, Road America, and hopefully some new cars as well. Uh, including those I already said, because already Porsche Cup, Super Trofeo, uh, Ferrari Challenge is a big, big difference, because it's a... it's taking a little bit different step from what the game is about, because the game is official GT World Challenge game, so we got a GD3 stuff, and we already got like an extra update of GD4, which is also part of SRO, which already gave people like, oh my god, this is getting better and better. And now when they show the Porsche Cup, which is a completely separate thing, Ferrari Challenge, which is a completely separate thing, Lamborghini Super Trofeo, which is a completely separate thing, it gives us more glimpse into the future of this game, which looks very promising. I think this game this year will blown up. And... I'm looking forward to be part of it, guys. One of the things you have to really use in this game is obviously traction control and ABS, because the GD3 cars are built around this. So, yeah, like people shaming on you using TC or traction control on free, well, tell them to go on zero and try race like that in a real race car, you know? 
So use traction control accordingly, use ABS accordingly. The trail braking really is a thing in GD3 and these, this game as well. So yeah, feel free to do that. If you're racing online, it's very simple. You just join the server and join. It's very easy. Uh, if you are participating with your friends in some endurance, you have to both sign up usually on some website where you have to connect your Steam because of the Steam ID is very important for Assetto Corsa because when you do endurance or driver swap, they have to have your Steam ID so they can like put you physically into the car. And uh, when you sign up, Usually it's on a website, you just sign up and log in through the Discord, through the Steam ID. And when you sign up for the race, and the race is actually like, the session is already starting, you have to join in a, in a, in a, in a correct order. Be really careful with that. It's, a, it's, a, it's still after like a year or two years, it's still people make mistakes in this. You have to have a driver one and driver two or driver three and driver four. And always you have to join with the driver who is like written first on the server with the car. And when he joins the server, you can tell your friends to join as well. And you are like all connected into the car and everything is working and you can be happy and race together. But be careful if you get disconnected or something happens, if you have like a connection failure, the always driver run needs to rejoin first. So uh, be careful with that, guys. It's, uh, it's a bit complicated in ACC compared to other games and mistakes can happen. So be careful. I think this is probably it. I, I I cannot imagine right now the other things what to tell you. We we cover basically like all the basics. So let me know in the comments uh, if it was helpful or if it's gonna help you guys. Let me know what you'd like to see next for a video for Assetto Corsa Competizione or even another game. I can help as well if I if it's in my capabilities. The the language barrier might be a problem, but yeah, let me know. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel as well, guys. Watch my online racing because we do i racing Assetto Corsa. Uh, uh, whatever you can imagine on this channel and always good racing and yeah guys thank you so much for watching my name is Jadier and see you next time guys get out get out of here already